Time for our Monday afternoon panel of political strategists. Graham Morris here with me in Canberra and Bruce Hawker in the Sky News Centre. A very good afternoon to both of you. I want to start with that uh, fabulous footage of Julie Bishop again, and we can roll it again <laughs> while we talk about it. Um, after the, the various, um, uh, well, suggestions and questions to her over the course of the morning about another cut to foreign aid, which she said she was very curious to find out more about. And then as Joe Hockey was on his feet in Parliament during the Malcolm Fraser tributes, talking about uh, Fraser setting up the Expenditure Review Committee. The Budget Razor Gang is one of the things he did as Prime Minister. Uh, this reaction from uh, Julie Bishop that you can see there in, uh, in the background in the camera shot. Now, um, Graham, I said earlier, there are two ways of reading that. She, uh, ministers often um, you know, make fun of the fact that the, the Razor Gang's always getting into their funding. Well, well if you look at what... she's particularly if you look upset at, about this. If you look at what Treasurer Hockey was saying, and that was that Malcolm Fraser had set up the first Razor Gang, it's actually yeah. true. Yeah. You know, Sir Philip Lynch um, headed it. And so that was actually true. So presumably she's not rolling her eyes at that. Um, it looked as if Minister Pine said something to her... Um, probably about, oh, here we go, here's your cuts coming up. And she's rolled her eyes heavenward at that rather than the tree. I don't know. Um, <laughs> It was quite a but reaction. yeah, it's getting a run around the country. It's, it's getting quite a reaction, Bruce. I mean, the, yes, it, it may just be spending ministers don't like the budget raise the gang. There's, you know, that's a fairly routine uh, response. But given uh, the story kicking around this morning about another foreign aid cut, and she'd been asked about it a few times, mm -hmm. how, how did you see that one? Yeah, I, maybe she was thinking about the immediate. <laughs> <laughs> rather than the historic with uh, Malcolm Fraser. So, uh, look, I, I think also you've got to remember that these people are very experienced. They know that they're under constant uh, scrutiny in the House and any gestures yeah. like that are likely to be picked up. They know that. They're professionals. You know, they can't scratch their heads without knowing that that's going to be a story that night. So it yeah. was either the, a matter the of more, very... Um, the, I think she knew yeah, what she was the more doing. <laughs> Yeah, the more substantive point here is uh, that's an area that uh, now they won't be able to go to to find some more savings. There aren't too many areas that uh, you can find savings now, Graham, are there? Well, I'm, I'm starting to get very confused about approaches to government. You remember people saying, oh, what's the strategy for, for building the climate for the budget? Well, remember, some genius was leaking or speculating on the last budget and everyone hated it before it came out. And here we are seven weeks from the budget and people are ruling things in and out. Why wouldn't you just say, Wait look, sorry, I don't talk about the budget. Yeah. And then there's a story in the Sunday papers before the Tuesday budget. There's a whole bunch of things in the Monday paper and that's it. I don't understand this stuff anymore oh. where people <coughs> are starting to talk about the budget, some of which affects um, the markets. Mm. You know, say we start talking about aged care tomorrow. Well, you know, there's a there's a lot of people on the share market who make a hell of a lot of money just going in and out on speculation. And I, I you know, I heard Matthias Cormann's interview with you, sort of with a nod and a wink, ruling out more cuts to foreign aid. But here we are, seven weeks from the budget. Why? Yeah. Why? Mm. Well, because he's got an upset foreign minister on his hands. Well. Uh, I, Minister Bishop could be, well be the same. Look, I don't talk about budget matters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think it, it, look, it, it annoys journalists because they, you know, they don't sure. get the answers they want. But one has to be very careful about speculating about budgets. It's and we point, also saw last time that you can build the wrong climate and get a smack on the head before the document gets yeah. comes out. I mean, the, mm. the, the, the point that uh, many ministers have made, Bruce, isn't a bad one, that big, big announcements, uh, whether it's the small business package that's coming or the childcare package that's coming, you could separate those out from uh, the budget. But do you, do you think Graham's got a point too, that mm. the rest of it you should basically keep your trap shut until budget night? You should, and I, I do think that the child care package should have been announced much earlier. Uh, I wouldn't have left that just to the budget, but I think what we're seeing here is a lack of confidence in the leadership uh, and as a result of that, we're seeing people much more prepared to speak out on issues, to, you know, to promote their own portfolio, their own ambitions. It all points to the ongoing problem that the government really has, and that's Tony Abbott. Uh, you know, maybe this was the sort of thing that Peter Credlin was stomping all over quite effectively, and now that she's pretty much been you know, put back in her box, people feel emboldened. Whatever it is, it's not a good look for the government. Graham's right. You do need discipline.
discipline, uh, particularly in the lead up to the budget. And you've got a very easy out with these things. It'll all be in the budget on the night. Watch TV, sure, watch Sky, and you'll see. Wasn't it. the problem last year? Wasn't the problem last year that the ground wasn't adequately prepared? That the government needs to explain to people mm. what it wants to do, uh, Graeme, to you, uh, but before it actually announces. No, it. no. My argument was that there was a lot of pre-briefing. Some of it was wrong. It was people who didn't have the guts to say to a journalist, sorry, I don't know, or I can't tell you, or wait to budget night. There was a lot of guessing and a lot of poor briefing. And people forget, but people absolutely loathed the last budget on, on the Monday, and it wasn't delivered until the Tuesday. Mm. You no know, wonder it got the response it did. So you reckon uh, keep it all under wraps? Well, I just think it, it is a good rule and a good discipline. Otherwise... Every second interview, you are quite entitled to say now to any minister, hang on, Matthias Cormann ruled this out, why well, won't you? Yeah. Mm. Does that mean but it's really in the budget? And then you start playing word games. But there are two different things here, aren't there? One is, you know, ruling things in and out of the budget, and the other is actually setting a strategic position or a course or frame in which to you know, put the case. Now, what they failed to do last year was to create the, you know, the impression, at least, uh, that the, you know, the economy needed to be reined right back in they, and spending needed to be reined back in. They didn't do that. And, uh, and as a result of that, and particularly in light of the promises that they'd made uh, in the election campaign, uh, you know, people were doubly surprised when the budget came down and it was such a, a horror exercise because there were not meant to be these cuts that they said that they uh, weren't going to have in the election campaign, but then they introduced when the uh, budget was brought down. So I think what they've failed to do, and I think Abbott continues to fail to do, is to tell us, well, what is the state of the economy? Are we going to be back in broad balance or whatever his words were in five years' time and everything's OK? Or is there a budget emergency? I think people are confused by that. His ministers are probably confused and that's probably leading to some of the things that we're seeing with this ill-discipline. So, all in all, it's a poor sales job that we're seeing right now. I'm, I'm not... All right, just, uh... it's, that's a fact. Yes. Sorry. Just, just quickly, New South Wales, uh, five days out, polls indicating, uh, well, uh, uh, either a comfortable or a just uh, victory for uh, Mike Baird. Um, Bruce, what are you expecting uh, uh, with five days to go? Well, I think it's going to be a really interesting last week, David. I think we're going to see privatisation and uh, you know, of the assets and uh, really mm. debated strongly. And that, I think, if it's effectively done by Labor, could actually shake a few votes out of the uh, undecided pile and push them over into their uh, column. I think it's a very big ask to expect that they're going to form a government. But I don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility that they could pick up in the order of 20 seats. And that would put them perilously close to being able to form a government or a minority government. So I think uh, it'll be a very interesting right. night on Saturday. Graeme? Uh, I think common sense would tell you come back to the norm. So 12 to 15 seats automatically um, would go. And if the Labor Party didn't get that, they, they might as well just go home. But I do, think, I do think the Premier has done a good job. I think most people think, you know, what is the reason to throw the Premier out? Uh, can't think of one. All right, well... He, he's, he's actually quite a good man. We will uh, see the results, and we'll talk about a lot on uh, this program a week from today, once all the results are in. Graham Morris, Bruce Hawker, look forward to talking to you then. Thank you. Quick break, uh, back with more on PM Agenda. Stay with us.